Bass players, are you ready? All right, once again, we've created six more for you guys who are wanting to play a little bit more gospel. And don't worry if you're new to gospel music, just like I've done in all the other packs. And by the way, if you're not hip to these gospel jam packs that I'm creating for the bass community, you need to know about them now. I've been making these gospel packs for guys that want to learn more about gospel music, who want to improve their playing, who want to learn more about the genre. Maybe you're not going to ever step foot inside of a church, but you want to know about that gospel sound. You want to know a little bit and have a better understanding about how we do what we do. So this time I've created more tracks for you guys to work out too. I brought in professional musicians to help me create this sound. So these tracks come alive when you're playing them. You feel like you're right there on the stage playing with a full band. So you're gonna get the real feel of what cats would do in this type setting. And don't worry, it's not super complicated. There are basically two sections to the songs. There's an A section and there's a B section. It's about a minute or a minute and 30 seconds long. And you're gonna loop that and just have fun and rock out. And don't worry, these tracks are completely royalty free so you can use them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever your place of choice to post your videos. Or if you're a person who just wants to learn in secret, that's cool. I got something for you too. So you don't have to worry about trying to figure out all of this stuff on your own when you listen to these tracks. They're banging, but you don't have to figure out all of this stuff by yourself. I am including the sheet music and tab for you guys who read or for you guys who read tab and you want to know what I'm doing. So there's an MP3 that includes my bass take. So you get a real idea of what to play around this track and you're not just out there fishing for ideas. Although it's wide open for you to do whatever you want to do on it. Not only that, as I've done with all of the bass jam packs, I'm going as far as to show you exactly. We're going to break it down. I've created instructionals for all six songs. So we're going to go through, I'm going to break down what it is I'm playing, the licks, all of it, the whole nine, you get it all. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to break it down. We're not going to take forever with it either. We're going to get to the good part so you can get to practicing and get to having fun on this stuff. So I invite you to check out the Straight Gospel Bass Jam Pack Volume 2. You're going to love it. Let's go. Good morning, good people, and welcome to Grooves and Motivation Live. Bernard, good morning. Good morning. Kenya is in the building. Y'all already know the drill. If you've been here before, I'm Jermaine Morgan. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's early here, 7.30, well, 7.34 a.m. here where I am, and the weather is a little rainy right now, <laughs> but it's all good. Super, super grateful to be here. Um, be sure to drop in the comments uh, in the chat where you're watching from this morning. I always love to speak to everybody who is joining me. And uh, we're going to jump into some grooves and we're going to jump into some motivation this morning. But uh, but first, I'm going to play to some of these. Uh, I think I want to play through one of these backing tracks. Just kind of wake up everybody this morning that's coming in. We give the stragglers time to get here, right? All right, so... Here we go. Right, let's back this up. Had to go where I can see it. Alexander, Mississippi is in the building. What's up, man? Chris, good morning. China is in the building. Alex, South Carolina is in the building. Uh, who is that? John Basis. Good morning to you, sir. I see you guys. I see you in here. Just keep dropping them in comments. I'll come back. All right. So see if we can start from the beginning. I think I think we're in the key of D flat, C sharp. All right. And my bass, as you guys know, most of the times when I play a six string, is tuned flat. I'm tuned. It's a low B flat. So if you see my hands, uh, you know, just know that it's half a step off. But everything is the same, right? Mm-hmm. 
So you know you guys got to be my sound check people today. Can you hear everything okay? Can you hear the bass? Can you hear the track? For the people who are wearing earphones, turn the track down a bit. Because I know, <laughs> folks, we say, I can't hear the bass. And then you come to find out you ain't even got on earphones. It's going to be hard to hear the bass just because of the frequency if you're listening only through a phone. You hear a little bit of it. But uh, Makey Smillion, Max Smillion, Maximilian, I'm, I know I'm killing it, but I'm trying. I am trying. I see you from Poland. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. I, I got three tries. I may have got three strikes, and I think I might be. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. Good morning to you. Good. So you guys can hear the bass and the track. I asked that now because there was one of these lives a few weeks ago I did, and I, I was just I was rocking out, and I didn't know for like 20 minutes. I'm playing, and there is no track at all that y'all heard. I'm hearing it all in my ears. But I went back and listened to the live, and I'm like, ain't nobody tell me <laughs> it wasn't a track. So y'all think I'm just improv the whole time with no track or anything. I'm just like... <laughs> And it was funny. It's like almost like that shreds when people make fun of the uh, the different artists and that kind of thing, and they're just playing the random stuff, and it doesn't seem like it worked with it. That's what it sounded like listening back to it. So that's why I'm checking to make sure everybody <laughs> everybody can hear everything, right, before I get too deep into this thing. All right, so cool. Everybody can hear the track, so I'll jump back into it. All right, so here we go. morning Tanya hopefully everybody is well be sure as you come in let me know where you're watching I love to see who's who's looking at me this morning right
What's up, Danny? London in the building. Gotta get my fingers together. So if you guys are wondering what that track is that I'm playing, it's called So Worthy. It's actually available on the Straight Gospel Jam, Straight Gospel 2 uh, jam pack that I, uh, if you've seen the commercial at the beginning of this live, this is one of the tracks from that pack. And I'm just kind of having a little fun with it. And that's what the point of the tracks are for you to kind of have fun for the most part, but learn your way around these gospel tunes. This is another one. I haven't played through this stuff. I'm just picking them at random. Uh, what is that seven flat over that four? Oh, I, I, you're talking about that flat seven over that four uh, sounds. I got what you're saying. You said it sounds good. Uh, tune from Burundi, Africa. Glad to have you this morning. Aim Abel. Am I saying that correctly? I be trying, y'all. Y'all give me give me credit. Give me partial credit. Just give me just a, a passing grade and I'll be all right. <laughs> all right, so let's. here's another one right here. I don't know what key this one is in. Let's see. Thank you. What's up, Carlos? Remember it. What's up, Washington? Zimbabwe in the building. So, so great observation. Somebody said, John basically says it sounds. I'm stuttering this morning. He said it almost sounds like suddenly. I know that's what you meant to say. It sounds like suddenly. So the idea of the jam packs, what I did with creating these things, I wanted to create songs that sounded like stuff that you've heard uh, so that you could kind of get an idea of uh, what to play over these type songs. You know what I'm saying? So you have something to practice to that feels like uh, certain songs. So you'll hear certain songs throughout that pack that feel reminiscent of, of certain songs from that era. So that's what I was kind of going for with the gospel choir stuff. So I'm glad that you picked up that it kind of, it reminds you, not necessarily sounds like it, but it reminds you of that that song. And that's the idea of it, uh, to kind of have something that reminds you. Uh, so again, you have a better way to kind of execute. So um, love the bass. I got the five string Fender Jazz. Love it. Yes, sir, bass man that cooks all right come on here bass man that cooks it you you look like you can barbecue <laughs> you got that barbecue spirit on you daniel what's up man brazil is in the building all right um 
Yes, I am aim able. So I please need runs and building to go slow. Thank you. We love you. Uh, I got you. Be sure to check this channel out. I say this almost every week, but grooves and motivation. I don't necessarily do lessons during uh, grooves and motivation, but uh, I do have tons of lessons available here on this channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that and hit that bell notification so that you know. What's up, Floppy? Yeah, he said, I'll barbecue. I knew it. I knew it. It's the hat. It's the, you got the hat turned around backwards. Anybody that's wearing a hat to the back, they can barbecue pretty good. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. Uh, have you ever played, um, I'm not even, APP, BTB, Six Train Bay? I, um, oh, I see what you're saying. Have I ever played a BTB? Um, yeah, it's been a minute ago, but yeah, I've played a BTB. BTB has been around a long time. Ibanez, yes, I've played a BTB. I think it was a six string that I played. I know for sure I played a five string BTB. And I think, yeah, a friend of mine had a uh, BTB six string, yeah, years ago. So, yes, I have played it. Uh, they're cool basses. Loving the bass. It's all awesome, but I missed all the info about it. So, actually, you didn't, Floppy. I haven't said anything about this bass. I just turned on tracks and went to playing. So let's see here. Let me play one more track or something, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about the bass. I don't know what this track is. Let me see if I want to play this one. Remember the line. That's sad because I wrote it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
All right, let's find another one. Let's find another one I don't know, and let's butcher that one, too. I'm just going through them. Let's talk about this bass. I see the comments are all about the bass, so let's let's get on it. And yeah, this is that Ricky Dillard feel, uh, Alexander. So um, let's go back. My oh, man Floppy says that bass sound the barks amazingly. Great sounding instrument. Thank you so much, Floppy. I really really appreciate that. Um, what type of bass rig do you play out of for tuning flat? What type of bass rig? I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. You can you can um, play any rig. It just your tuning has nothing to really do with the rig. It's all about, you know, how you tune your bass. Sometimes if you go too low, you might have to adjust, you know, the intonation and everything. But uh, I just tune flat. I tune my lowest string instead of being B is B flat. So all right. So this this bass. This is the new bass. If you haven't seen it on any any, I well, I only did one video, technically. Uh, since I had it, I only I just got it last week, last Thursday. So I'm still spending some time learning it, getting to know it. Uh, you know, taking family photos and all. Now I'm playing. I hadn't took any pictures, but uh, so so it's a serene bass. I've been asked constantly, "Is this a Ken Smith?" No, this is a serene. If you look at that name there, if I can get it to focus, there we go. There we go. All right, so. It's made by Scott Serene of Serene Basses, and uh, I had a six string before this one, and it was a um, it's like a Coca Bola top, and uh, different. It was called a Quest. The model of it was called a Quest, but it was the same type of bass, very similar in in the makeup of the bass. And I wanted something a little bit more custom. I bought that one from a good friend of mine, mentor Nate Holloman. Uh, if you guys seen one of my um, old interviews from years ago uh he played that bass on the interview and that was the bass i was playing so i wanted something a little bit more you know custom to me uh it was cool but it, it you know you know those things it sounded great but it wasn't always me so i wanted something a little bit more me and so scott serene and i we started talking talking through the plans of what we wanted to do with this particular bass i told him what i was looking for the sound i was going for and I think he knocked it out the park in terms of what I was going for. Uh, many of you guys know my warrior, Isabella, and I had a warrior six string as well. So I wanted something kind of like that, but not really something slightly completely different. So that's what we went with. Um, so the specs on this bass, this is uh, ebony fretboard, as you can see. This is a neck through. Right. 
This is a neck through, so you'll see that this is a, a rock maple neck uh, and core. Well, maple neck and rock maple core on the base. It's like this. Uh, this I lost my train of thought. Buckeye burl top and back uh, that you see on here. That's that fancy looking wood, that Buckeye burl top. If any of you guys are not wood enthusiasts, you're probably wondering what that was. But um, yeah, so it's a Buckeye Burl top and the headstock is the same. It's Buckeye Burl as well uh, on the headstock with the pearl inlays, pearl logo. Um, what else am I missing? Yes, yeah, somebody asked earlier, is this a ramp on the base? Yes, this is a ramp. If you follow me on social media and you saw the picture that I posted, the initial picture that I had did not have a ramp on it. It didn't have a ramp in the picture. I didn't take that picture. Uh, the builder took the picture, and uh, he didn't put the ramp in. He wanted me to, you know, install it myself. That way I can, you know, kind of put it in how I wanted to put it in. So I installed the ramp once I got it, but he did build the ramp uh, along with the base. And so I think this is a piece of ebony that he built the ramp from, if I'm not mistaken. So, yes, this is a ramp. Uh, I do have some clearance with the ramp. Some of the ramps, like with my other base, uh, my other six string, it was even with the pickups, which that was cool. I could deal with that one, but this one has a little bit more clearance so I can get up under there a little bit more. I can dig in, but not too much digging in. So, yeah, I think this one, this one is a little bit more versatile in terms of the, the design of the ramp uh, to give me a little more versatility. If I want to dig in just a little bit more, I can without, you know, this taken away. So, yeah. And this little cover here, I know some people wonder, like, what is this that comes here? This is just the uh, access for my uh, truss rod. There's two truss rods in this base, and this is just an access cover plate. I like the design of it, but that's simply all it is, is a uh, truss rod cover plate here. And it's also, you know, the same as the, the fretboard, that ebony. So we ran that ebony all the way through. And hip shot... Uh, tuners and, and bridge Bartolini pickup soap bars that I have on here there is a NTCT Bartolini preamp uh, I am a Bartolini I guess you call artist or whatever but yeah most of my custom bases have used the Bartolini preamps so yeah um what else am I missing did I cover everything I think that was it I gave you guys a quick rundown of what everything is um, so how do you compare the playability between that and your warrior basis? Um, it's different. I'll say it's, it's different. Now, playability is still easy to play to me. It's still easy to play. It took a little bit of um, getting back comfortable with being on a six string. I've been off a six string for months now. So I think the only thing it took me a while to just get comfortable with playing a six string again because I've been away for, from one for so long. I think it's been, ooh, I got to go back. I, I don't even remember when the last time I played a six string, like really sat and played one. So I've been away from a six string for a while now. Uh, so that's the only uh, hurdle for me. Uh, bass man is, it took me a minute to just get back comfortable with being on a six string again. Good morning, um, good morning, Anthony. And this, this bass... It's a little heavier uh, simply because of that rock maple core, um, but it doesn't bother me. It, uh, I had somebody to ask me about the weight of the bass. I think this bass comes in at about 12, <laughs> 12 and a half pounds. Somebody was like, yeah, stay in that gym, doc. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm good, though. This doesn't bother me, so just, just be advised if you're interested. This is the weight of this bass with these particular specs, um, but I've played heavier basses. And again, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, is it armed with barks? Yep, absolutely. Uh, somebody mentioned that that track that I was playing sounded like Ricky Dillard. Absolutely. I, I think I answered that already. Uh, I responded to that already. Dalton, what's up, man? Uh, hey, Jermaine, are you uh, favoring the bridge pickup or is it the blend? So this the that's what I didn't cover. The EQ or the, the control knobs on here, how it is, it's volume, volume. Each pickup has a different um, volume. 
I might change that. I don't know. Um, but it's volume, volume. It's a stack. Because I, I, the reason why I say I might change it, not because I don't like it. Uh, it's just I'm just more used to having uh, the one volume and the pickup blend. But this is ha this has the two separate volumes. And I'm, I'm working around getting comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, so it's volume, volume, and then it has a stack with the the lows and the highs, and then you have a mid boost cut right here. That's so that's pretty much it. It's a act, passive active preamp. It's nine volt, and it's like the the button down is in active mode. If I pull the button up, that's passive mode, so I can still play it. The battery dies, so yeah. I like that feature because I have been in places where my battery started dying and it was just 430 until I could find a battery. So it just sounded like I was playing through a trash <laughs> trash bag or something like that because you get all that static and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, Magri, T Magri, if I'm saying that correctly, is there a ramp on that base? I think I answered that already. So you must comment that earlier what is the key point of practicing impro improvisation um that's a loaded question um hmm i would say listening i mean I, again this is not a necessarily a lesson grooves and motivation isn't necessarily a lesson but i would say the key point to practicing improvisation is listening and understanding the language understanding a language just kind of like i would say it's just like trying to speak as you're learning to speak, you you know you start trying out words. As you learn different words, you begin to implement those words uh, in the music and see how it works. Uh, some people think you only can play jazz and improvise, but you can actually play anything and improvise. It's just a matter of what will you be allowed to get away with in the music. <laughs> so if you're playing on a professional setting, like those tracks I was playing to, you can improvise to those tracks, but I wouldn't advise it. But it doesn't mean that it's not possible for you to improvise. So improvisation, just simply kind of stepping outside of what the norm is and seeing what you hear over that music. It's as simple as like if there was a melody, you play that melody and just kind of uh, begin to color that melody a little bit with something a little bit more creative or something that you're hearing over that. It's basically your ideas. That's what improv is. Your ideas, you uh, filling up the space. Actors and uh, singers do it when they are doing uh, acting or they're doing plays or sometimes I hear about it in movies and television shows like that part wasn't written in. I improv that. So like it's just a little some extra that I add. So that's my um, dumbed down version of explaining that. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Jesse, I think I answered that already, too. Yeah, this is definitely not a Smith, not definitely not a Ken Smith. This is a serene. Get to know the name, Serene, <laughs> Serene Bass. Yeah, so uh, I know it looks similar. Well, I don't really. Some parts of it look similar. I can see the other one that I played kind of looked like a Smith. But uh, yes, this is the Lunara by Serene Basses. This is the the model of this bass. If you want to know, if you go to serenebasses.com, S-U-R. Let me, matter of fact, let me put that in the chat so you guys can check out more information serenebasis.com and i'll put that on the screen so that's if you want to know any more about these bases you can simply visit that and you can see this model the lunar i think this is like the third one of these models that he's built he hasn't built a lot of these models i think he's built more of the quest it's a few other models i'm not familiar completely with all of the models but yeah, there's a few other models that he's built. Um, let's go back. I think I'm missing some stuff. I like the I like the strap questions, and I love that strap question. <laughs> Let me go back. I'm getting ahead of myself. Doggone, I missed all kind of stuff. All right, so where am I? At? Where am I? At? All right. Good morning, Andrew Jermaine. Uh, and I'm in time to be introduced to the newest member of the bass family. Happy to be here this morning. Happy to have you, Andrew, man. Appreciate you. Uh, beautiful instrument and great sound. Thank you so much. 
bass, man. It's a beautiful bass. Floppy says, even the back of the bass is stunning. Man, I appreciate it. I didn't build it, but to God be the glory. Hey. <laughs> Tiffany says, what do you like most about using six-string bass? It seems to be your preference. It is for most of part. So you ain't seen my video when I talk about uh, why I, what was it? Four reasons why I play six-string bass. I think that's the video that I did where I kind of go in depth talking about it. But I like the, just being able to create. I like the idea of uh, just the way I hear music. I'm not restrained. Now, just for my my only four string lovers out there, don't get mad at me. Uh, if you do, that's on you. But I'm say, I'm saying it's not that I don't feel like I can do certain things on a four string because I do. When I'm playing certain records, I'm being hired to do certain things. I might only use a four string. I might only use a five string. I do a lot of recording, so depending on the needs of the song. I might do that, but when it comes to my personal preference in terms of my personal creativity, I like the idea of being able to play using chords and all that kind of stuff. I was playing this idea uh, this this morning. What was it? Something something along these lines. Let me see here. Uh, what was it? I was doing something. I think I had a loop that I made for that. So the range that I get with it as I'm trying to, um, you know, come up with different melodies and ideas, it helps me to think. So I enjoy it for that reason, Tiffany. Let me play something. Got some bass now. So, I mean, for me, somebody might say, well, why don't you play a guitar? I've heard that before. I do play guitar, by the way. <laughs> but I enjoy being able to do it all in like one instrument. So if I'm, I'm hearing something, I can literally compose a song from the bass. And I know Victor has mastered that in terms of, well, Vic did it all with four strings. I've heard all of the stuff. Personally, I just enjoy the range, being able to, if I'm hearing a high note, getting all the way up to that note and not having to try to bend all the way on a four string or whatever. It's just, I don't know the versatility of the bass. Long, short, uh, the versatility of the six string is the reason why I prefer it because of how I hear music. It allows me to express it fully um, 
and I can get the low end and I can get the high end. So I get the best of both worlds coming from being a guitar player, but also coming from having a deep love for the bass. I, to me, I get the best of both worlds by being able to play a six string. So hopefully that answered the question uh, really well. So <laughs> uh, God bless you, brother. Good morning, Angel. Bless you too, man. Pennsylvania is in the building. Thank you, sir. Beautiful bass. Oscar says, good morning, family. I hope we have a blessed day today. Me too. Me too. Uh, the design is awesome. Did you create that part too? I, um, well, this is actually, this is the designer. I mean, you're talking about the shape of the base. No, that, that's actually the model that uh, Scott Serene created in terms of the actual shape of uh, the model. That particular model is the Lunara body style. And the, um, the wood, this is naturally how that wood looked, that piece of um, Buckeye Burl that he had, that's what it looked like. And so it was supposed to be, initially it was supposed to be a completely different look, but as he got to working with the wood, it came out looking like this. And he was like, are you okay with it? I was like, man, that's beautiful. Like, yeah, absolutely, let's keep going. And so uh, I, yeah, it just, it worked out. So no, I didn't necessarily design it. I knew what I kind of wanted, but obviously these people who are professionals at that, you leave it to them. You can give, give them your direction of what you're looking for, but ultimately they know how to bring this whole vision together. So yeah, uh, it kind of exceeded what I was trying to go for. Uh, my initial vision of what I wanted, I had an idea, but yeah, he definitely exceeded what I was looking for. Uh, Serene base. Uh, definitely not serene. It's definitely a serene base. Love the finish on it. This is that Wilkins finish uh, that you see on most bases, that shiny stuff that makes it shine. Just an extra layer of protection for the base, honestly, uh, because these woods are soft, uh, like um, Buckeye Burl, even my Isabella base over there with the uh, flame spalted maple. That's another nice exotic looking wood. But the downside about it, because that wood is so soft, it's easy to get nicks and stuff. So if you get a close up, if you ever see me live and you come close to my Isabella, my warrior Isabella, you'll see it has nicks and dings and bruises and bumps. Now, I will say this. Most of that is because of, what was it? I don't want to throw the wrong one on the bus. I'll just say it was the airport. I can't remember which one I was on. I think it was United, but I don't want to throw United under the bus. But they did chunk my base and I had had it for like, two and a half months I was on the road with Canton Jones and we went somewhere I think we went to Virginia and I kid you not when I saw them chunk my base I, I something in my stomach just it was turning and and a whole another kind of spirit rose up in me and praise God <laughs> I'll just say that we'll leave that alone but yeah they they chunked my base and so that soft wood because it wasn't protected that soft wood was um danger uh, it was uh endangered i don't know if that's the correct word but that software was damaged that's the word i was looking for it was damaged so i wanted to get an extra layer of protection for this base so that i didn't run into that problem again if it did if it did get nicked it wouldn't just completely ruin the base um all right so getting to the strap questions julius thomas says what type of strap is that i'm glad you asked <laughs> now i did have something to do with this one this is my signature strap uh j morgan signature straps which are available on jermainmorgan.net you can order yours they come in multiple color options this is a leather strap uh designed by evo um the company evo straps based out of brazil this is a double-sided strap so if you've seen me playing both sides it is yeah this is one strap um, I do have another one, but yeah, these are my signature straps. You can see the, the logo there, um, and, and it has the website on the logo. So yeah, thank you guys for asking about the straps. I appreciate it. I didn't have to give you all a shameless plug because you asked about it. <laughs> uh, well-deserved, Floppy says, well-deserved, Jermaine. An amazing instrument for a truly inspiring player. Man, to God be the glory. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. What's up, Steven? Good morning. Uh, Jesse says, watching from the Philippines, Brother Jermaine, good to have you, man. Uh, it's all about the type of strap you have to deal with the weight of that base. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that, I think, 
yeah, uh, many people and notice this 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 strap is wide too. So it's not like one of those thin ones that's cutting into your shoulder, that kind of thing. I have played gigs where I have a thinner strap and towards the end of the gig, I was hurting. Like my whole shoulder was sore. And uh, yeah, so you just stuff you have to be, um, you know, it have, you have to be mindful of those things when you are purchasing the bass. Thank you, Edward. I think that's how you say that. Um, DJ says, I feel like I'm compromising my bass plan by accepting MD position. Your thoughts? Appreciate you pulling me on topic, uh, DJ. I'll get through the rest of these comments and we'll jump into that. Um, do you know soon and very soon? Uh, I think I do. You talking about the... Uh, let me turn this off. Talking about that soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. That's the only one I know. I don't know which one you're referring to, so... That's the only one I know. But yeah, I, I played it before years ago, back probably in the 90s or something like that. Good morning, mama. How you doing? Dr. Peggy Moore, everybody. That's my mom. Uh, Danny Williams, you name your basses. I've started to. Uh, he says, my acoustic is called Mary. My five string is called Bobby. And my uh, four string is called Debbie. You got some band member names for your bass basses and uh, guitars and stuff. I call this one Lulu. I'm simple. Uh, it's a Lunara, Lunara, and I just called it Lulu, Lulu, just to, I don't know. That's all I came up with. I didn't put a lot of thought into it. Um, just as long as it does what it's supposed to do for me, that's, I'm good. <laughs> uh, Stevens, the six string gives you access to more notes and chords that brings your creativity to a higher level. Absolutely. Now, and, and I will say on the flip side of that, Stephen, now the challenge of playing less strings can also push you creatively as well. Now, I will say that because things I have had, had to figure out on a four string because I didn't have those extra strings uh, that did push me creatively in a different way. So I'll say each instrument can push you creatively depending on your perspective and depending on what you're going for. Because if you're used to playing more strings all the time and you get on less strings, it's going to force you to think. And that's what used to happen when I got on four string. I definitely had to think more, think of creative ways to create what I need because I didn't have those lower notes. So stacking, uh, like playing fifths uh, to be able to create that lower note sound. So it depends on what you're going for. So I, I agree. And uh, I just throw that in there as well. Um, yeah. So Lewis says, Jermaine, you're a great bassist and very inspirational. I truly enjoy your playing and bass voicing. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it, man. God be the glory. Uh, Daryl Clayton says, is there a fret spacing that you prefer? For example, the spacing difference between the Fender uh, Standard Jazz versus an Ibanez. And does it make a real difference in your playing? For me, it kind of does. This is the 35... Uh, uh, it's like a 35 millimeter and um, hold on like in terms of the, the nake length and it's like nine and a half spacing I think for me certain spacing personally makes me it makes me work a little harder in terms of how much I'm having to stretch and that kind of stuff this one I think the spacing feels slightly different from the um the warrior that I was playing, uh, and I got to do a comparison. I don't even remember what the actual spacing was on that bass, I, but I think this one has a little wider spacing on it. Uh, so it does affect how you play because I know that fretless bass that I'm playing over there is a 33 inch scale. And so, no, 20, no, 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 I'm sorry. Is it, it's not 33, it's maybe a 23. I think it's a 23 inch scale don't don't get me walt if you're watching this morning for fan base <laughs> but i think it's a 23 inch scale so it's a lot closer and it definitely affects how you play because you literally especially on the fretless you're literally having to like be really mindful of where you're playing you don't have a lot of room for error you have to really be on it especially with fretless anyway you got to be on it but just with that closer spacing it definitely affects everything all right so uh, hopefully I answered that, uh, Daryl. John says, it's almost like that Jonathan McReynolds song, 
May your troubles keep you near the uh, cross. Oh, you talking about what I was playing earlier? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I can't. Uh, now I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm trying to remember the song. I'm trying to remember how I go. Now you got to be thinking about this song. You have it stuck in my head all day. You got me distracted, man. I blame you. <laughs> John Bass has got me all somewhere else because I'm trying to remember how that song goes. I never played it before. All right, so Andrew, 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 I'm sorry, man. Wild Jermaine, that loop and sound just now was awesome. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, Daryl says, I love your explanation of your six-string preference. Can you break down those chords? Uh, is it is this... playing like just major chords i'm just actually moving through uh see y'all get me in the teaching i'm gonna get way off so it's i'll play it how about that i ain't gonna i ain't gonna say anything i'm just play it slow the song now so sorry anyway <laughs> all right tiffany says i agree with danny williams jermaine you should name your bass yeah we named it lulu all right so yes you came to my church in okay somebody says oh you said i came to your church in virginia and at warrior bass that's where i first heard you oh wow i had no idea man wow steven that's that's crazy i did not know that now I'm trying to remember when did I come to Virginia. I know I came to the Carowin. No, it wasn't Carowinds. That's North Carolina. It was uh, Kings Dominion is where I came to in Virginia, and my base got damaged. So that must have been another trip where I came up uh, to your church in Virginia. That's crazy, man. Uh, Moses, good day, man. Good day to you. Chris Hall, good morning. That is a very nice, great investment. Thank you, sir. Uh, I like the name. <laughs> uh, Henry says, I have been listening to basses playing six strings. Now with my four, I feel limited. Though it helped me to learn my whole fretboard, can't wait to have a six string. I would advise people to just, you know, just put your hands on one and, and try it. I'm not telling you to go out and get in debt and buy a six string bass. But it comes down to preference. You got to at least know what you don't like or why you don't like something you know spend some time with it and then after spending time with it like, oh yeah i know for sure i don't like that you know what i'm saying i have people i, I did i used to do a music uh, event back in my hometown of mississippi and the type of music i was bringing down there wasn't necessarily the most popular music and most of the people were kind of like dismissive of the music initially until they came out and heard the music and they found out they really really liked it 
is like, oh, man, this is really good. I'm like, that's what I've been trying to tell you. If you just listen to it, you'll see what I mean. And so they were able to be exposed to some different styles of music. Here's some stuff that they didn't know that they were going to like simply by giving it a chance. And that's all I'm saying with the six string bass is just give it a chance. Uh, John says, I have an Ibanez and I call her Shirley and she is six string and she's turned, she's tuned to B flat. She sounds like she can cook. That's what I'm saying, John. I'm just saying that. I'm just putting it out there. Her name, Shirley, she sounds like she can cook. But I know it's, <laughs> I'm being funny, man. Uh, what doll do you use to make your awesome music? I'm using Logic Pro. I've been using Logic, man, for 10 plus years now. I, that's my preferred method of recording is Logic. All right, so let's get back into uh, the, the, the talk. Um, there was a question that came up. And it, it kind of gave me a great transition into um, what I wanted to talk about for today. So let's go back. It was a great, great question. He said he feels like he's compromising. There we go. DJ, if you're still here, he says, I feel like I'm compromising my bass playing by accepting MD position. Thoughts? Uh, DJ, I don't, I don't agree, man. I know what you mean, because in the sense of being an MD, you have to focus on everything and everybody else. Uh, and so it doesn't give you as much time to really focus on initially when you're new to it. It doesn't give you as much time to focus on making sure everything is polished and it's tight because you're listening for everything. You're giving cues, you're giving signals and all that. I'm talking from experience of being a, an MD on bass. And so that's why I say I don't agree. Not completely. I agree to some degree, and then I don't agree. I feel like it makes you, you're not compromising. That's why I say I don't agree. You're not compromising. If anything, you're making yourself a better musician, and you're making yourself more well-rounded because now you're training yourself uh, to get out of your own way because the more you do it, the more you MD, the more you get good at it. Anything that we start to do is uncomfortable at first because we're not used to doing it. You're not, you know, you wasn't good at playing the bass when you first started playing the bass. And now as you've been playing, you've gotten comfortable with being in a certain zone of like, I know, you know, when we on this song, I get to have fun and I get to really focus on what licks I'm going to play. Well, being an MD causes you to not just focus on yourself. If anything, it causes your awareness to broaden because now you're listening to everything and everybody in the band. In my mind, I would almost encourage all the members in the band to at least MD one time. And I say that cautiously. Now, if you don't have any time and you can't, you tone deaf and all that kind of stuff, tread with caution. <laughs> but uh, all, in all honesty, I would say that because being in that MD role, it gives you a different perspective on how you see the band. And once you see the band, it's kind of like being in the producer's chair. When I, when I produce music, I hear the whole band. So the things that I'm playing, a lot of times when I come on here for Grooves and Motivation, I'm just goofing off. I'm just having fun. But all of this stuff you hear me ripping and playing, I probably wouldn't play that if I'm in a, the setting of a band. But here it's you know, fair game. I can get away with almost anything. But not to be confused with being in the setting of a full band, I have to pay attention and leave space for everything that my fellow band members could possibly do. And if I'm going to do something, I want to make sure that it complements uh, something that somebody else is doing or something somebody else is saying. I want to be a support to the singers or whoever is out there. If I feel the song building, then I know they need my energy. Well, I'm going to bring up what I'm doing in terms of my playing. I'm going to, especially in gospel music, I'll say that in gospel and like jazz fusion and funk and all that kind of stuff, as the music, especially when you're playing live, as the music intensifies, you have to intensify what you're playing with the music. So you might have to start moving a little bit more, whereas uh, when you're MDing, you have to think about where everything is going. What's the next thing coming up? But the art to it is learning how to do both, learning how to move and still get whatever you got to get in there and make sure that nothing goes lacking, making sure you're not overplaying. Because being in that MD role, it really forces you to pay attention. Am I overplaying? Am I doing too much in this song? Is it too much happening? 
You know what I'm saying? What is the keyboard player doing right here? Is this normally a spot that the guitar player takes on? But when you're kind of in your own way, and I'm not saying everybody does this, but from time to time we have the tendency to get in our own way and you know we get to enjoy the groove and the vibe so much that we're just doing our own thing but whereas when you're in that mdc you can still stretch and, and get out there a little bit but you're still listening to everything because you're the conductor you're you're pretty much the one who's leading you're behind the wheel you're driving you see what i'm saying so um it's 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 just a matter i think of perspective when it comes to compromise you're not necessarily compromising when you're taking on an extra role. Now, there are extra responsibilities associated with uh, that duty in terms of becoming the MD now, becoming the music director, but I don't feel like uh, compromise, you're not compromising. If anything, you're stretching yourself, and anytime you stretch yourself, it's not going to be comfortable. <laughs> so we're going to change the word, the comp, we're going to change that from being uh, compromise to now you're being more uncomfortable because it's forcing you to use a muscle that maybe you haven't been using as much. So now that you're able to acknowledge what that is, let me dig in a little bit harder and start working on talking through some of the things I did that, that helped me when I had to start MDing. I would force myself when I practiced the song to talk through the song. So like if I'm calling out, you know, calling out the numbers or whatever the case may be, you know, flat seven, go to the three, go to the two, I would practice that way. So now it's not new to me when I get on the microphone or get in front of the band. I'm not doing it for the first time. So now it had to, I had to shift the way that I was practicing. And I encourage you guys, even if you're not an MD, to start doing that now, just in case the call comes, you're not caught off guard and you're not feeling like, oh man, I, I now I got to do this. Now I got to do that. If you start practicing it now and preparing yourself for it now, if that call ever happens, you have to take the wheel. Like the pilot, <laughs> if the pilot gets sick, somebody got to get in that seat. Do we finna go down? So, you know, you got to be able to, to start practicing and anticipating being ready. What they saying, staying ready so you don't have to get ready. Not that you're saying I'm going after the MD position, but it's like I began to do these things. I had to multitask when I was uh, MD. It's like I was running tracks. I'm talking to the band. Sometimes I'm communicating with the sound guy. I'm seeing who the leader uh, up there he is. My little short time that I was working with Jonathan Nelson. Now, that was intense because Jonathan is like, you got to be watching him like a hawk the whole time because he might shift like that. And so I'm watching him. I'm speaking to the band. I'm looking around. It's a lot of stuff that's happening and a lot of stuff is going on. And so I encourage you guys, if um, you're going to be, or if you're thinking about, or if you're in a band, just, just go ahead and start working on uh, just fine tuning your MD skills because you just never know when you might have to pull it out. So to that, I, I just wanted to say that you're not compromising at all by doing that. It's just it's stretching you and it's uncomfortable. Uh, I know exactly what you're feeling because I've been there, been there, done that. I got the t-shirt. Uh, what's up, Vic? Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. Let's see here. Have you tried playing the 7 through 12 spring? If so, what's your opinion? I'm not sure what you mean, Anthony. Uh, this playing the 7 through 12 string. Uh, oh, so you're saying like playing from 7 up through 12 string bass? I think that's what you mean. I haven't. I haven't went beyond 6 strings. And honestly, personally, I don't have a desire I think for my creativity, six is, I'm good. I'm good with six. Now, Bubby on seven string is a monster. But Bubby has a, a vocabulary that, that needs about seven to 12 strings. And so, in my opinion, Bubby, he he deserves <laughs> to be on the seven string bass. He got seven strings worth of information to share with everybody. Uh, I'm not saying that I wouldn't or I can't play a seven string. I just had no desire to uh, try out a seven string. Uh, if I ever get a chance to put my hands on one, I would try it out to give it a shot. But personally, I, I'm, I'm good on six in terms of understanding and being able to create. And I don't feel limited. I don't feel like I need another string when I'm playing a, a, a six string versus being on a four or five and feeling like I wish I had one more. Uh, I think it maxes out for me on a, uh, on a six string. Uh, John says... You have a way of waking up the mind. Uh, 
of musicians. Wow, man. To God be the glory. I can't take no credit for it. Uh, Daryl says, my seven-string Ibanez BTB is named Sheila. Yes, sir. Sheila. That's all right. So since we're naming basses and instruments, all right, drop your bass name. If you hadn't already, just simply drop that. If you're watching in the replay, drop it in the comments. What's your bass name and why? Because some of y'all got some interesting names. Uh, you know, Sheila, uh, Earlene, and, and Lula May, and whoever else. Like, what's, what's your reason why you're naming your bass what you're naming? All right, so Julius says, uh, please put the link up uh, for the strap. Trying to buy one today for support. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, Julius. Um, uh, let me find that link. I will put that link up. Um, I'll probably put it at the end of this video. And if you go to my site, here's a quick way to do it, Julius. If you go to my site, JermaineMorgan.net, let me just, I'll drop that link. Simply go to my shop page. Uh, Jermaine Morgan, if I can spell my name correctly, uh, .net. Simply go, yeah, simply go to my shop page and you'll see, I typed it in. I don't know where it went that quick. Um, I know I typed it. I saw myself type it. <laughs> but yeah, so just go to JermaineMorgan.net. Go to my shop uh, page. And when you go to that shop, there it is. I don't know why that took so long to come up. So when you go to that shop tab, you you can see the different straps and the different strap, strap options. So I really, really appreciate your support in advance. <laughs> Uh, and you'll see all of the, the details surrounding. Like I said, these are handcrafted in Brazil. These are leather. Um, so, yeah, this is like a, I guess, a custom strap, so to speak. Um, Alex says, I know your channel is focused on bass, but do you have any videos that walk through the production process and thought? I think I did one, Alex. I think I did one. I have to go back through my videos. But if you search my channel, I think I did one like... It's been a minute ago. I can't remember. I can't remember the actual name. So you probably had to do a binge and find it. But yeah, I did do a video where I kind of went through my process of how I create music. Um, uh, so, but I had two bases and I gave one to my wife to learn and I called that one Laverne. Just so happened to be tuned down to be flat as well. Got you. Got you. Colombia. What's up, Carlos? Good morning to you. Do you know... Any Spanish, I just learned the bass lines. Now, I don't know any Spanish. Uh, I probably know a couple of words, but I don't, I don't really know Spanish. I have the one called Oops because it was an accidental. <laughs> it was an accidental purchase. I got you. I got you. I don't think I didn't accidentally bought no bass. Everything I've done with these basses have been very, very intentional. All right. So getting back to the, the topic at hand, don't compromise. I have to, and I, and I say this, uh, you know, let me read this last comment. Well, last two comments. Welcome to the Serene family. What's up, Andre? Andre, uh, I got three Buckeye Burrows as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I named the Fender Squire Michael because, oh, of course, Michael Jackson. Got you. Got you. Right. So, so yeah, so don't compromise. One of the things um, I try to be big on is my word. I try to be really, really big on my word. I'm trying to teach my kids and I'm trying to teach my kids to honor the, their word. Honor your commitment to yourself and don't allow anything or anybody to compromise that commitment. I don't care if, if it's, we want to call it tribulation, going through different things in life that make you want to take the easy route out. You cannot compromise if your word is to have any value. If your integrity is to have any value, you can't compromise it. You can't compromise it. It's kind of like the um, the statement that my guy made earlier, saying feeling like he's um, compromising in order to become an MD. Now, if it's something that's stretching you to become better, I think that's just more so of an adjustment. You're not necessarily compromising your plan unless you're refusing to put in the work. If you're refusing to put in the work to come up to a standard, because if somebody's asking you to be MD, that's probably because they see some leadership qualities in you. Um, there's a lot of things to that. I don't want to get into all of the, the dynamics of that. But if someone is asking you to step up to the plate and become an MD, it's probably because they see some leadership qualities in you. So I don't think you're compromising or settling 
to become an MD. Um, but if anything is making you raise your level, it's making you raise the bar. And if something is causing you to raise the bar uh, and raise your standards, that's a good thing. But if it's causing you to compromise your word, your value, your worth, then you probably want to look at that. You you probably you probably want to look at that for sure. Um, and what what's the? Let me go back here. Cause I had um I had something I, I lost it that doggone quick, but yeah, but you 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 definitely don't want to compromise. You don't want to compromise your values. You definitely don't want to do that. Uh, let me let me go back here. I don't want to get too far behind into these comments that I forget. So my seven string bass is named Sheila because she's funky like the old R and B group ready for the world so when i play her she reminds me for his song oh she <laughs> of course bubby is a bass guy yeah bubby's a cold-blooded dude thank you uh so cold i appreciate that so again guys i just you know just really want to reiterate that that fact of you know staying uh just making sure you, i don't know why my title is different i'm seeing my title and uh, I don't remember writing that down. But uh, let me go back. Because I don't remember putting that down. I'm going to go back through these comments. Because it was a comment that I seen and I was talking about it. And I lost my, tra <laughs> lost my train of thought that fast. Hmm. It was a really, it was a really good... Um, yeah, I would like, I would like to, but Fender bass is not expensive. Um, I don't know what you mean by I would like to, but this Fender bass is not expensive. Um, but yeah, so so anyway, getting back to the back to the topic, <laughs> back to the topic at hand. Anybody have any questions before I get? back into that and I give you guys time to jump in let me see here I had a couple of did I miss that okay you said but not not expensive so he's I would like but fender base but not expensive I'm not sure what you mean uh, Mackie Smillion if you come back with that and uh Hold on, I'm seeing some old, I don't know what happened in my chat. I just got completely thrown off with the, uh, okay, there we go, there we go. I'm like, the, <laughs> the comments got a little weird for a second. It threw me completely, threw me completely for a loop. All right, so again, guys, <clears throat> I'm trying to read through it. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm looking through the comments, making sure I didn't, I didn't miss, I didn't miss anything uh, in terms of. I try to respond to all of the comments, and sometimes I <laughs> get so far in trying to respond to everybody that I'm, I kind of, you know, lose, lose my place and where I was at. But some, for some reason, I guess I'm looking through the comments, and for some reason, my, uh, my comments went back to like a old set of comments. And that's the weirdest thing to me because I'm like, what in the world? Do you have any advice for someone trying to make a career? Yeah, this is like a old. Um, yeah, this is weird. It's very weird. I'm like really out here lost right now because I'm looking at my comments. My comments are showing me comments from a previous live. And that's the <laughs> that's the weirdest thing. But yeah. But anybody got any questions for me? I pretty much, my guy that asked the question earlier, um, I pretty much responded to what he was saying because that was like right on the money of what I was wanting to say. But anybody got any additional questions for me? Because I didn't really want to drag this out. I wanted to make sure that you guys understood uh, where it is I was coming from with this. So 
and you're grooving on the bass, is it more intuitive meaning creation? So I don't know why this is showing me um, old comments right now. I got old comments coming in for, from the chat. This is really, really weird. This is really weird. So it's showing me, for some reason, it's showing me like an old chat that's coming up in the uh, the chat section. You're grooving on the bass. Is it more intuitive meaning or creation? Yeah, so that that's on. Uh, I don't know why it's showing me this. So I got I feel like I'm gonna hit the twilight zone or something. <laughs> My comments is going weird right now. So I need to reset something or something like that because it's throwing me for a loop right now. But um anywho, do you guys have any questions? Because this is throwing me completely for a loop. Uh I don't know what's going I don't know if it's uh, like a glitch in the system or something like this. Do you have any questions for me before? I jump off because I'm trying to go back to my earlier uh, questions and I can't, not questions, but my earlier comments and I can't find my earlier comments. That's the weirdest thing to me. Hmm. That's weird. That's weird. But anywho, so thank you guys. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you, guys. I feel like I hit the twilight zone all of a sudden. Um, but I really, really appreciate you guys for for jumping in and listening this morning. I didn't have a whole bunch that I wanted to get into, but I think, you know, we covered pretty much the main point. I don't want to drag it out. Uh, and like I said, these, uh, I don't know what's going on with my comment section over here. Let me see if I can get on my phone to see uh, the live see the live chat because it's, it's showing me something completely and you let me try to turn the volume down here yeah so it's, it's showing me a completely different set of comments that I'm looking at uh, this is crazy all right let me go back I apologize, guys. I got thrown completely off by the comments that was uh, showing me like a old. It was like an old uh, live. The comments were from an old live, and I don't know what that came from. Uh, all right, I'm going to try to go back. I'm on my phone now. I'm going to try to go back and look at these comments and respond. All right. And so if I hadn't responded to you, it's because my comments here got real weird. I just hit the twilight zone or something. I'm I'm uh <laughs> I'm trying to bring myself back. Lewis Carter, uh Jermaine, you're a great bassist and very inspirational. I truly enjoy your playing and bass voice. Man, thank you so much. To God be the glory. Um Who else did I miss? All right, I'm trying to go and find where you guys, where I stopped at so I can respond back to, it's about all about the strap if you have to deal with the weight of the bass. All right, we was great bass. Thank you. I feel like I'm compromising my bass playing and accepting MD, MD position. Uh, I think I got that, DJ. Um, do you know <laughs> Do you know soon and very soon? You get just straight song requests. Um, I do know soon and very soon. Good morning. Danny Williams says, do you name your basis? I think I, I went to all of that. I'm I'm sorry. I'm reading through the comments to get back caught up with where you guys were at because my comment section just went really weird all of a sudden. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Um... He says, I've been listening to and playing six strings. I know that my four string, I feel limited. 
though it helped me learn my whole fretboard. Can't wait to have a six string. Yeah, Bernard, that's that's you know, six string it definitely it definitely um gives you more versatility. I've bought an Ibanez bass and I call her Shirley. She is a six string that's tuned to be flat. Uh what dog do you use to make it awesome music? I done missed all kind of stuff. This this <laughs> my comments just threw me for a loop this morning. I don't know. It must be the weather. I'm gonna I'm blame it on the weather. Um, I use Logic. I use Logic to make music. If I hadn't responded to that already, uh, I'm probably way behind in the comments. Thank you, Vic. Uh, you have a way of waking up the mind of musicians. To God be the glory. My seven, my seven string Ibanez B2B is named Sheila. I think I read that. I think I read, yeah, yeah, I think I read through a lot of this stuff already. So let's go back. Let's go back. All right, so now I see where we are. Yeah, this, we just had a whole little Twilight Zone experience. So welcome back. <laughs> welcome back, guys. Uh, I like the Fender, but it's too expensive. But uh, you said I like, I would like to, but Fender bass, but not expensive. Uh, do you have advice for someone trying to make a career? out of their music do i have advice for someone this is um gp40 do i have advice for someone trying to make a career out of their music if it's what you want to do um you have to be determined because life is going to challenge your desire and you have to make sure and be sure that that's what you want to do. Make sure that that's like your thing, that you can actually do this. Uh, meaning like if you know your s scale of musical ability, meaning your ear, your playing might not be there fully yet. But if your ear is, you know, like you, you have no ear, it's going to be really, really difficult. Um, if you're willing to put in the work, it can happen if you're already pretty far along. I would advise you to get some help, get some coaching, get some training to help you to get better. Listen to more music, to study, that kind of thing, uh, to advance your skills in whatever way is necessary for you to advance so that you can make a career out of this thing. Because one of the things about having a career in something, people are looking for you to be a professional. So however you can get to the level of professionalism, whatever that looks like for you. I don't know. I'm not saying that you have to be the greatest in the world to be a Marcus Miller or Victor Wooten or whoever. You don't have to be that to have a career in music, but you need to have an awareness of what it is you're doing. I think it's possible to attain, um, but it's going to take a lot of hard work and dedication to attain it. And you have to have a will to not give up. That's my advice. Uh, and best thing I can tell you, if you if you put God first in it, I know that sounds like a blanket statement, but putting God first in it, you don't have to take the traditional routes that everybody else is taking. I know people who weren't that good who done really really well in music, uh, and you would have think you would have thought they had to be a virtuoso or something like that, and that's not necessarily the case. You just have to have a will and a determination and have the priorities, in my opinion, put in the right place, and just just this attitude that I'm not going to quit, I'm not going to give up. And, you know, if you can't find the lane that you're looking for, be willing to create one. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, as talented as I put it like this, as talented as some of you guys might see me as being, there's a lot of calls I don't get. Uh, not because I'm not good enough to play them, not because I'm not talented enough to do it. It's just people have their picks of who they want. So if people had it their way, a lot of people would leave you out of their circle. That's why we have the opportunity to create lanes for ourselves. And for me, with the help of God, I've been able to create a lane for myself that I don't have to really depend on other people's approval of whether something I'm doing is good or not or whether something I'm doing is acceptable or not. And so in that I say, if, if you make a commitment to yourself to better yourself in every way, consistently, continually, well, you'll run right into the thing that you're looking for just by simply staying consistent. Consistency counts. So that's my advice to you. Be consistent. Be consistent. Trust God. Be consistent and keep moving. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that, that answers your question. Uh, Vic Jackson says she's a 
five sheen, Marcus Miller, uh, 10, second generation name, Gertrude, because she's sassy, <laughs> Boosie Funky. I got you. I got you. Daryl Clayton says, when you're grooving on the bass, is it more intuitive, meaning a creation of your own, or is it a conglomerate of groove lines that you... I, honestly, Daryl, I don't put that much... I don't put that much thought into it. The less I think, I think the better it is. The less I think, the better it is for me. Because it's like we learn all of this stuff as musicians to forget it and just play it. You want to learn the stuff and be comfortable and have enough knowledge of your instrument that when you get ready to sit down and do what you do, you don't have to try to think about all of this stuff. You can just do it. It's kind of like you learn the mechanics of walking. You learn the mechanics of doing a certain job. And once you learn that thing, you don't keep going back to uh, the mechanics. It's like it becomes a natural part of who you are. And with conversation, as you go through school, you keep learning different words. But every time you get ready to have a conversation with somebody, hopefully we're not trying to pre-plan everything that we're going to say because that when we do that, the conversation has the tendency to feel more rigid than organic. Uh, and it doesn't feel like you're truly in the moment unless you're in an argument and you're trying to choose your words carefully. <laughs> but it's when it's with a friend and when it's from the heart, you just let it flow. So that's my opinion to the question that you asked. And I think um, when I'm creating, um, you said when I'm grooving on bass, is it more intuitive, meaning a creation of your own? Or is it a conglomerate of groove lines that you've heard and practiced in the past? It's probably, just to be more uh, direct to your question, it's probably a mixture. It's definitely a mixture of both. Because all of this stuff becomes part of our language, kind of like the alphabet and words. You didn't create those words, but you add your own spin to them. It becomes part of your language and your dialect and all that kind of stuff. And your experiences determine, determine how those words are going to come across to the, to the listener. Uh, these are the same 12 notes that everybody uses, but my experience and my perspective determines how I deliver uh, the words and how I deliver the grooves and all these different things. So that's that's my answer to that. Um, hey, that's hey, that's the current question. Uh, Mike, good morning to you. Uh, the grooving question is a current question. Absolutely. I think I, I answered most of the stuff. I think I got back caught up. I y'all have to forgive me. I'm like I felt like I was going. What's the word? Uh, what these guys they kind of get like happen to older people. They get lost and they don't know where they are. Like that literally happened to me because I'm looking at my comments and I'm seeing stuff from way back when. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know I did this like <laughs> it's been years ago when I answered. It wasn't years, but it's been months ago when I answered this stuff. And so now I'm seeing the same questions pop up and it just it, it messed with my mind for a second it threw me for a loop um good afternoon watching from zambia blessings uh blessed sunga good morning to you well yeah, for me it's morning so good morning to you uh god first absolutely mike uh tiffany said i agree we should create a lane for ourselves uh, i think i have to make a new commitment regarding the base start fresh absolutely absolutely so um Anyway, I apologize, guys. I got thrown for a loop this morning. My my um my live when I looked at the title of the video and I was looking at the comments, I was like, wait a minute. It's like I had a weird deja vu or something happening and just I completely lost my train of thought. And so I do apologize for that. No I have had notes and things here, but I like to just kind of flow and be honest with you guys when I come and talk for grooves and motivation because I feel like those are better. The ones that I've had my notes, they, I don't like the way they flow. Honestly, I don't like the way that they flow. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And if you're late um, to the broadcast and you don't know what it is that's going on and you don't know what it is I'm playing, I am playing a serene bass. This is my latest custom serene bass. And yes, this is equipped with. I know y'all ain't gonna go through all the specs of it because I went through that through the beginning uh, at the beginning of the video. But uh, yeah, I will put um, this on the website hopefully soon, and you guys can can check it out. And uh, maybe I'll put the specs and all that kind of stuff on the website. I don't know when, so you gotta wait. 
but these straps are available on the website if you want one of these custom um, JM signature straps. This is my my strap. I um, had it designed, but so anyway, thank you guys so much for being here, and uh, I do apologize for my Twilight Zone loop that I got caught in. I have no idea what that was about at <laughs> at all. So anyway. Great analogy. I don't even know which one you're referring to, but thank you. I appreciate it. But thank you so much, guys, for, for tuning in with me this morning. And uh, it's more stuff coming. I will be putting out more videos so you can hear this bass more in detail as I learn it. I'm still learning this thing. It took me a while to really go through and learn that Isabella. I feel like I'm still learning it. Uh, that's the great thing about getting a new bass. It's like it's a journey that you go on because there's so many tone options, so many different things that you don't know that you think you know about the bass and it's like oh, I done went through all the tones and you accidentally turn some on you find something it's like whoa so that's the fun part about about learning but this this is what we have waited so long for um this is the I ain't gonna say it's the Jermaine Morgan signature because it's not it's just a custom serene uh my custom serene six string bass so hopefully you guys dig it Oh, yeah, if you're not following me on um, social media, uh, you can follow me at jmorganbase. I'm on Instagram, and I'm on, I forget to announce that sometimes. Uh, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Twitter. I am not on, um, what's the other one? TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at jmorganbase there on Instagram and that kind of thing. So... Let me make sure that, all right. Paul says, there are, I sound like I'm about to preach. No, his name is Paul. In the comments says, there are times in running out of licks uh, or feels every time I have jamming sessions with my band, more like I'm having a mental block. Can you tell me what should I do if this occurs? Is it you're running out because you have a limited vocabulary or is it you're just forgetting stuff because i just understanding the difference in that if it's because of a limited vocabulary because i used to do that and it was because my vocabulary was limited i didn't have enough information and it's hard to keep going when there's not enough information and you just kind of stuck with if you only have a few ideas it's hard to form complex sentences when your vocabulary is limited so you have to just kind of get a little bit more up under your hands in terms of vocabulary and make it part of muscle memory. A lot of the things that I've planned, that I've played and that I've learned, all of those things have not yet went to my muscle memory. I play a lot of them, but I, I know a lot more than what I play because I don't quickly recall it. And because, you know, our emotions affect everything that we do. You can be in front of people. And you can have a whole bunch of information. You can be like a theory whiz, but you're going to always resort back to muscle memory if you're like maybe intimidated or you feel slightly uncomfortable or if your brain or your mind is off focus or something like that and you start thinking too much while you're playing. Some people are, are the complete opposite. They have to think and, and folk, I mean, not focus, but they have to think and literally come up with all these different things while they're playing. I do not work that way personally. The less I think, the better. And once I make this stuff part of my muscle memory, it makes it easy for me to uh, execute these things once it's part of my muscle memory. Because if I'm trying to think the whole time, I'm in the way of the music, personally. I don't like to be in the way of the music. I like for it to flow and it to have a nice, you know, like, uh, for instance, I'm going to put myself on the spot and I'm supposed to be getting off of here because I'm over. Um, right here, I'll start playing something and try my best not to think. If anything, I'm trying to match what I'm hearing, not what I'm thinking. And so, you know.
So the objective for me uh, is to try to match my hands to my ears, like try to make my ears and my hands line up. So what I'm hearing, like as it comes down real time, try to make my hands do it. And I don't, when I think about it, it gets in the way, if that makes any sense. I know in a sense, technically I am thinking, but I'm, I'm trying to be almost an autopilot. So that way, when when I really emotionally hit a moment, I can be fully in that moment and not really worrying about technically what's going on here. Granted, there are times when I'm playing and I'm trying to remember songs. That's a little harder to do. But I think the more familiar we are with the songs, the more familiar we are with what it is we're playing, what it is we're doing. Uh, and, and from and just be clear, I'm talking more from the improvisational standpoint, just just so I'm clear with everybody. Uh, because in the middle of a song, you do have to kind of make sure you're thinking. Um, but from the improvisational standpoint, uh, I try not to think when it comes to because in particularly when you're saying running out of lakes and fields and stuff like that, that's improvisation. So when it comes to that part, I'm trying not to think. Or if I am thinking, maybe this will help you, Paul. If I am thinking, I'm thinking to the next place where I'm going to go. Instead of being so focused on the chord that I'm over right now, I'm thinking, all right, what's the next place this is going to move to? If I do think about something and it's like lightweight thinking, it ain't like a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, Tiffany brought up a great point. I ain't read your whole comment, but you said, I sing. That's another thing. If you sing, for some reason, it's like that makes all the neurons and all that stuff fire off to, to just put your hands in the right place. So if I, if I sing what I was playing just now, my solo feels a lot different. It feels a lot less rigid. Feels a, for me personally, and that's what I like. I like it to feel less rigid, less mechanical. I want it to feel like the voice. And so even my vibratos and the way I approach it feels completely different. Uh, Tiffany says, I sing without thinking. Even your grooves, when uh, you do something consistently, you can do it without thinking. I'm saying we have to, uh, we, I, <laughs> have to play the bass consistently to get to your level. I mean, it's just, I get what you're saying, but yeah, like for instance, let me try to sing and you'll notice it won't have the, as much rigidness to it when I sing it versus when I'm, um, when I'm just playing stuff. So let's try it again. Sometimes I'll stop singing out loud, but in my head, I'm still singing. It's almost like I use my voice like a, some cables. I have to like jumpstart my brain to, to start singing instead of being mechanical. So yeah, I, I'll use that a lot. So remember what key I'm in. It's like once I get it started, in my head I'm singing. And sometimes you'll hear me, if you're close to me while I'm playing, you'll hear me humming certain notes. And other times it's like, it's just nothing there. But when I don't think singing and I don't think trying to articulate it like a vocalist, it, to me it doesn't come across as sincere, if that makes any sense. It comes across as robotic. And some songs you want that, you want that robotic kind of thing happening. Now, I'm saying robotic lightly. I don't mean like, I mean like like playing funk music or something like that sometimes you want those more mechanical feeling lines that's very staccato and that kind of thing but when I'm referring to singing musical terms when I want something to feel more legato I want it to so I don't even there's times where I don't even play I don't even like finger every note I'll slur certain notes because I want that vocal kind of thing
so like that whole that whole phrase. It's a it's a certain effect that I'm going for. Not that I can't play all of those notes, but I don't want it. I don't want that attack to feel like that. I want the notes to feel more slurred. And maybe everybody doesn't like that, but that's something that I'm going for in the moment. So like. So it depends on what I'm going for. point across so anyway um thank you guys agreed i like it can we hear some tones of that bass and what's the price range oh buddy here we go here we go <laughs> the price range of this bass um of course you guys know i i am an artist as well with serene um not exclusive to anybody but I did get an artist discount, let's put it like that. So, um, and yes, I'm I'm still I still have my warrior bases. Uh, let's say that. Um, but this this base, brand new. Look at the 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 custom work and all that kind of stuff. Uh, brand new. This base is about sixty five hundred. This is the price that you can get this particular base built for. Which is still cheaper than a Fodera. Uh, I'll say that. Uh, that's just shameless. <laughs> Whatever. But you're not getting any less quality in my opinion. The bass is just phenomenal. I'm looking at the build quality of the bass and it, it doesn't... They, he didn't cut any corners with it. And I mean just the craftsmanship of it is phenomenal. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's... that's So, you know, you ask him about the tones of the bass. Um, let's go to the passive side and I suppose been gone by the way all right so just starting with that low B string on the passive side I'm gonna put my headphones on where I can hear that's that low B on the passive side the bass is all the way up my highs is not fully engaged but you can still hear That's all on the passive side. All right, so let's get that B on the active side. Definitely a lot more body. Like we stuck distorting a little bit. All right, and so to boost the highs all the way up so you can hear just a little bit more clarity. Yeah, so this is an ebony fretboard. So I went over all of the specs. I'm not gonna go back through all of the specs of the bass. I did that at the beginning of this video. So once I end it, I've been on here for a while, so once I end it, you guys can go back and check out the specs. All right, so yeah, do me a favor and go and check out all the specs. So I've played a good bit and went through the tones at the beginning of the video as I was kind of playing. So you guys be sure to uh, go back, go back and watch the beginning and you can hear everything that I'm doing there. So again, thank you guys. I'm way over the time that I was supposed to get off of here. I appreciate it. I'm out. Much love. Peace.